Okay, keeping with the uh, ethos of doing it live and doing it raw so that you could hit see any struggles or challenges I hit and how I resolve them, we are now going to take this code, which we did in the previous example, where we marshaled data to JSON, and we're, we're going to take this JSON right here, and we're going to unmarshal it and bring it back, bring it back from JSON. All right, so that's our goal. And, uh, and the first place I want to start out is I want to go to GitHub. And my username on GitHub is goes to 11 And you might check that out, the movie Spinal Tap, if you've never seen it. <laughs> or just go to YouTube and look up U uh, Spinal Tap goes to 11 And uh, I don't know, I'm kind of an intense person and I really work hard in that way. I'm very passionate. That's a better word. And so I get into things and I just like do it full force you know, 110%. I don't just go to 10, I go to 11. <laughs> but it's also in a way that, you know, totally understanding that, yeah, you, know, you can't go more than 100%. 100% is it. <laughs> of course, there's always that famous Yogi Berra quote, which is, uh, we're going to turn this team around 360 degrees, <laughs> which is also pretty funny. So these colloquialisms that we have, like giving it 110%, or, you know, turning the team around 360 degrees. <laughs> Not that that's a colloquialism, but it's kind of funny. Um, I don't know. Goes to 11. You could go check that out for a little bit of a laugh. First thing I'm going to do is go into my Golang web dev repo. And that shows you how to use the Go programming language for doing web development. And on Greater Commons, we also have uh, this course, Golang web dev with Google's Go programming language. And so that's a great course. We just launched Greater Commons, which is why, you know, like literally six weeks ago, why uh, these don't have a whole lot of reviews yet. I'm going to heart that because they're all my favorites, and I like seeing the red hearts. Um, but anyhow, this that, that course goes with this code repo. And in here, I have an entire section on JSON. And so in here, I also have this first file called readme.html. Now, this is something that's kind of cool about uh, GitHub that not a lot of people know about. You could go to a, a website called raw git and I could paste this in and then a URL for development, U for URL for production. And now if I grab that, it actually serves up that HTML. And so I'm gonna paste that into our code right here and uh, understanding JSON, I'll just put that there. And this is gonna be a really long link. So I'm just gonna highlight that and we will put it there. There we go. Boom, boom. And that's from a website called, uh, you know, raw git. Cool website. Just so that you have that website also. That's rawgit.com. All right. That's the first deal. See, man, it's just fun to hang out and code. And I kind of like the raw approach. <laughs> it's like the garage band of coding right here. Okay. We've got that. Let's take a look at it. So JavaScript object notation is a text format for the serialization of structured data. It's derived from object literals of JavaScript. JSON can represent four primitive types, strings, numbers, bools, and null, see, primitive types, and two structured types, objects and arrays. Uh, here are four small JSON texts containing only values. So these, this is all JSON, a string, uh, a number, a bool, and null. And then objects in JSON are represented with uh, curly braces. Right, so uh, here, an object structure is represented as a pair of curly brackets um, surrounding zero or more name value pairs or members. And so this object here has one uh, name value pair. This is the name, there's the value, which is another object. And inside this object is the name and then the value, name, value, name, value. So it kind of has that map look and syntax, key value, name value. An object's an unordered collection of zero or more name value pairs. A name is a string. There are the names. A value is string number, bool, null, object, array. Declare properties using name value pairing, separate by commas. So anyhow, this gives us a little bit of, uh, of what, how JSON, what JSON is like. Sweet. But now we want to unmarshal. So we could go, I just wanted you to have that resource in case you wanted to learn a little bit more about JSON. So we're going to go to the documentation. We're going to look at unmarshal. And so I might just search for Marshall. And when I do that, I see, okay, here is unmarshal. And we have a, it takes data, which is a slice of bytes, and, uh, and then an interface, and it returns an error. And if we remember here, we have that thing, right? Rant, 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 right there. We have this thing here. 
I was putting it down. So usually my image is up here in the top right. So I get the code and whatever we're looking at down to the bottom left area. We have Funk and Marshall, and we pass in the data as a slice of bytes, and then we pass in V interface. Unmarshall parses the JSON encoded data and stores the result in the value pointed to by V. The value pointed to by V. Well, what data structure should you use to do that? If you find JSON out in the wild, wild, how do you create your, your Go data structure to do it? There's this cool website, so I'm just going to take, you know, this JSON, and I'm going to go to another website, and we're done with, we don't need raw git, we'll leave that up, and we're done with this. And uh, there's JSON to Go. There's a website called JSON to Go. JSON to Go, convert JSON to Go instantly. Nice. So I'm going to click on that. And this is a great website to know about. And I could drop the JSON in there, and it gives me the data structure that I need. And it's auto-generated type, auto-generated, a slice of struct, right? So it's a slice of struct. And, uh, and here is the data structure that I need. Plus, there are some tags here, some tags. And so if we go back and look at the documentation, but before we do that, I'm going to copy this and drop it into the course outline. Cool website. Website. Cool website. And, uh, and there we go. And so that's, uh, that's an awesome website, Jason to go. I think those will be self-explanatory. Cool. So that's my data structure that I would need to use to unmarshal that. I would need something like that. But we were looking at tag. So if I now search for tag, and here's unmarshal. Let's see, unmarshal tags. I think they're called tags. Uh, struct field name or its tag. So maybe they're talked about up here. Tag, 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 or maybe they're right here. Notice this command F technique I'm using, right? Where I do a command F, I search my browser for something, gives me all the results. And then over on the right side of my browser, it shows me where those are. So if I have some sense of like, that's right, I think the name is tag, I could search for that. And then I could find in the documentation wherever it was, I remembered reading about this thing called tags. And so here are tags. The encoding of each struct field can be customized by the format string stored under the JSON key in the struct fields tag. The format string gives the name of the field, possibly followed by a comma-separated list of options. The name may be empty in order to specify options without overriding the default field name. The omit empty option specifies that the field should be omitted from the encoding if the field has an empty value, defined as false, zero, nil, nil pointer, uh, any of that. As a special case, if the field tag is dash, the field is always omitted, no, or minus, right? Uh, note that a field with the name minus can still be generated using the tag minus comma. Examples of struct field tags and their meanings. And so uh, field int and, uh, and then JSON my name. Field appears in JSON as key my name, right? But then it'll map to this field in Go. Uh, and here it appears in JSON as my name, field appears in JSON as my name, and the field is omitted from the object if the value is empty, and it maps to this in Go. And, uh, and here field appears in JSON as, key, as a key field, so in JSON it's the same name because we didn't specify a name right there in between those, but it, the field is skipped if empty. Uh, this field is ignored by this package, so don't do anything with it. And uh, this one, the name is that in the field. So if you look at that JSON to Go converter, we have here, right, uh, the, this field in JSON maps to this field in Go. This field in JSON maps to this field in Go. This field in JSON maps to that field in Go. That would have happened normally uh, without having these uh, tags because these are the same name. But if they've been different, that would allow the mapping to occur. Cool. All right, so we're on our way. We have this first chunk of code. I'm going to take this and, uh, and just copy it, and then I'll put it up here at the beginning. And let's do a new play going playground. And I'm just going to put this right here. So here's our JSON. And we'll just call it a string. It's colon equal to backticks. Bam. And that's our JSON. So that's, uh, that's our JSON. And now to use this, Marshall, unmarshal. Unmarshal wants to take in a slice of bytes. So we come back to the Go Playground, and we're going to convert this. 
a byte slice, colon equal, is going to be a slice of bytes, and we're going to use conversion and convert that to a slice of bytes. So let's just print both of those types out and look at them. S, BS, <laughs> format it and run it. And so we have a string and we have a uint8. And a uint8, if you remember, we go back to Golang spec and look at our uh, numeric types. So down here, under types, click on numeric types. And we have a uint8, so we'll just do a control C, con command F, command. Command C, Command F, Command V, and search for UN8. And we have a UN8 is a set of all unsigned 8-bit integers, and a byte is an alias for a UN8. So that's a slice of bytes. Nice. All right, so we have a slice of bytes. That's our byte slice. And to unmarshal it, we're going to need some data structure. And we got this data structure right here, so I'm just going to copy that as if I was getting this from the wild, and I could drop this in. And I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to call it person. And, uh, and the underlying type is struct. And so that is exactly what I want for there. And then I'm gonna do uh, people, just like we had before, is gonna be a slice of person. And, uh, and I'm gonna do, instead of that, right, this would work, and it's just my composite literal, right? So here's the type, here are the curly braces, and I'm not putting any values in there. So that, that works. Or I could do, and we'll leave that, we could also do var people is of type slice of person. And I think that's more readable. And so that's your goal. When you're writing your code, you wanna write code like a master. That's what we're moving towards. We wanna to be masters. And to write code like a master means that you are writing code, you're taking that which is difficult and making it appear as easy as possible as easy as possible. So, uh, you know, the difficult is easy when presented by a master <laughs> or something like that, whatever I said before. So var people person, that's the one I'm gonna go with, but we'll check this one out just to make sure that that works. And, uh, cause the proof is in the pudding <laughs> if it compiles. And so now we have people and, and we could drop, you know, our code into that. So let's, let's try that. So we're gonna come back to the documentation and uh, unmarshal requires that data slice of bytes and then the value pointed to by V and it returns an error. So it's gonna return an error and we're done with that one. So I'm going to come here and do error colon equal. And if I'd used error somewhere up before, I would reassign, not redeclare. And so that's something. If like upper my code somewhere else, there's already something else that checked for error. I wouldn't want to use colon equal, I just use equal because that's going to now just assign a new value to this variable error, which is fine. You know, it uh, has a new value and we're going to check it there. But um, that, that's where you would use just equal. Here, it's the first time I'm using it, so I want to declare it as well as assign a value. So I'm using the short declaration operator and I'm going to unmarshal. And uh, I want to marshal into this. I need to pass in that byte slice. And then I also need to pass in my data structure, but it needs to be pointed to, so it needs the address. So I'm gonna put in the address of people, which is a slice of person. Remember, this is a slice, right? Because it's an array in JSON, and it has objects in it. And those objects should each match to people. And then I'm gonna check my error. If error is not equal to nil, then let's just print the error out. And, uh, and now that we have that, we should be able to, um, we should be able to print out all the data. So let's uh, print out all the data. All of the data. And we could also do things like for, let's just see, we have a slice, index value, colon equal, range, people, and each of these is gonna give us a person, so we could format print line, and we could say person number, and this will be the index, and then, uh, and maybe we'll just have a little bit of like an indent on that. And, uh, <clears throat> or do a new line before, I think will be better. And then uh, we want to print out the values. So format.printline 
and uh, we'll have v dot first, comma v dot last, and v dot age. First, last age, nice. And that's good, and that should print everything out. All right, we'll see what I forgot. Format it all, run it. Nice. I love it when the code works. <laughs> Makes me think of the A-Team. I don't know if you're old enough to remember that show. I love it when a plan comes together. Uh, so we have, uh, let's see, string, uint8, and then all of the data. And so all of the data, and let's do a new line in front of that just to separate it. All of the data, so there's all the data. It got unmarshaled. And then we have person number zero, so that comes from here. We have James Bond 32 and person number one, Miss Moneypenny 27. So we have unmarshaled, and we learned some good stuff, and we saw how to use tags. And, uh, and now let's just double check that it worked this way. Nice. <laughs> right, so those work both ways. I like this way better. So I'm not even gonna leave this one in the final code because your final code's your final code. So leave it the way you want it. And uh, I think that's a really great example. And that's on marshalling. And hopefully that's given you some insight into working with Go. And um, on marshalling is something that is pretty common when you do web programming. So this is a really good skill to know about. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>